AWS Pricing 101. There are two types of pricing models. These are CapEx and OpEx. CapEx basically just stands for Capital Expenditure, which is where you pay upfront, and it's fixed sunk costs. So it's like buying a server upfront, or buying a whole bunch of servers, or buying network, etc. And if you think about a startup, you wouldn't have been able to afford buying physical servers and storage and all of that as an upfront cost because you didn't have any money when you're starting up. And that's why prior to public cloud, people would have to go out and raise capital and get investors on board to even get the ball rolling. OPEX stands for operational expenditure, which is where you pay for what you use. This is where you're paying for things as you use them. And that was the great thing because you only pay for what you are using. This is what startups usually use because it's cheaper for them. Now let's take a look at the fundamentals of driver's cost. Compute charges you on an hourly basis. You can use the compute and the processing services at a very low price and also only pay for the resources that you have used. And again, when you talk about time constraints, if you are using those services only for one hour, you'd be paying for that hour only. Moving on, we have storage. AWS charges you per the gigabyte, that is even if you use very little space. You'll be paying for that space, and since it is almost as less as 1 GB, that is you have to pay only for 1 GB. What this does is you don't have to worry about scaling, because if you were using more resources, you would be paying for those resources according to your scale. Lastly, we have data transfer. Again, AWS charges you per the gigabyte, and it charges you only for the data that goes out. AWS has built up various pricing models, so you can move further on and look at different pricing models according to your own requirements. There are three basic pricing models, which are as follows. First, we have pay as you go. AWS has a very flexible pricing model where AWS only charges you on an hourly basis plus for the compute capacity and the resources which you are using. So if you need a particular resource for say one hour, then you would only pay for that one hour. Next up, we have pay less as you use more. As far as AWS is concerned, the more services you use, the less you have to pay or the less you will be charged. You have a chance of saving up to 70% of your total cost and that is a very nice feature to have. Lastly, we have save when you reserve. Now, if you know how much resources and the compute capacity that you're going to use in the near future, you can simply reserve these services in advance. In that case, AWS charges you fairly less compared to other models. There are further three types within this model. So let's take a look at each one of them. So for pay less when you reserve, these are the different pricing policies. The first one is no upfront. In no upfront, you don't pay anything upfront before you reserve the instance. But since there is no advance payment, the costs are higher than there would be for the other two options. The second one is partial upfront. In partial upfront, you pay a partial amount when you are reserving the instance. The costs in this model are less compared to no upfront, but it's still more expensive than full upfront. And then lastly, you have all upfront or full upfront. In all upfront, you pay the whole amount when you are reserving the instance, and the pricing is the least it can possibly be since you're paying the complete amount all upfront. When it comes to pricing models, AWS offers several pricing models depending on the product. These include the following. The first one is on demand. This allows you to pay a fixed rate by the hour or the second with no commitment. The second one is dedicated instances. This provides you with a capacity reservation and offers a significant discount on the hourly charge for an instance. The contract terms are one year or three years. Third, we have spot instances. These enable you to bid whatever price you want for instance capacity, providing for even greater savings if your applications have flexible start and end times. Lastly, you have reservations, physical EC2 server dedicated for your usage. Dedicated hosts can help you reduce costs by allowing you to use your existing server bound software licenses. There are some free services that you need to remember when it comes to using AWS. These free services are as follows. Amazon VPC, Elastic Beanstalk, CloudFormation, Identity Access Management, Autoscaling, OpsWorks, and Consolidated Billing. Though these services may be free, any resources these services may create 
as a part of using these services will be charged. Only the usage of the service is free.